Hey guys, welcome to Tech Nobility, your source for no nonsense tech. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started with what I think is a superb comparison here for you guys today, where we have the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, the Samsung Galaxy S9, and the iPhone X all being compared with each other. So we got a three-way comparison. We're going to go ahead and cover as many features as we can, do some performance tests, uh, go through their specs, battery life, etc., etc. So stay tuned as we get started with this fantastic comparison. Okay, first thing first, thank you guys for watching Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. My name is Barrage. So, you can see right here, on the far left, we have the Galaxy S9 Plus in lilac purple, the Samsung Galaxy S9 in lilac purple, and the iPhone X in silver. So, all of them have black front with black bezel screens. They are all Super AMOLED displays all manufactured by Samsung so in terms of their saturation color saturation they're all very similar in that regard you can see the colors are very vibrant they pop out some people are a fan of this some people are not some people like the natural tone that you get with an LCD display me personally I've always been a fan of the AMOLED display okay here you can see the back of all three respective devices um, uh, you know it's it's all glass, right? So it, no matter how you slice it, these things are going to be very delicate devices. Um, it, it's, it's. It, I believe, in my opinion, it's easier to repair the Samsungs with the back glass than it is the iPhone. The iPhone's back glass is literally glued onto the frame. It also has antennas built in, so it's a little bit harder to fix than the Samsungs. And they're all water resistant. It's IP67, IP68, IP68. So they're all water resistant, but you know they're all glass so you're gonna these things are gonna break no matter how you slice it now I do think the purple the lilac purple is absolutely stunning on the Samsung's um, you know I know a lot of people will think that this is maybe a, a female tone and I, I don't I don't really buy into that nonsense if you like the color buy it but you can see the lilac purple by the bottom of the device let me see if I can just get this here Okay. You can see the design of the S9 Plus. Just going around the phone. Dual camera, 12 megapixel. Fingerprint scanner underneath the camera now with the flash. Okay, stunning device. Just looking at the S9 here. Okay, the iPhone X, all fingerprint magnets by the way, you can see the metal bezel, they all have metal bezels, dual camera as well, 12 megapixel on all three devices, just want to go ahead and look at the backs one more time all next to each other. Size wise you can see the iPhone X and the S8 are probably the easier ones to use with one hand they're just average size hands okay in terms of their batteries I do want to get you the battery lives here real quick the uh, S9 Plus has a 35 mil 3500 milliamp battery the S9 is 3000 milliamp the iPhone X 2716 I do think that so far I've had best battery life with S9 Plus uh, the regular S9 I seem to have fairly poor battery life for whatever reason could be the way I optimize my software I don't which I don't think so because usually I soft I optimize my software to maintain battery life but nonetheless I've had really good battery life with the S9 Plus been able to go through the day without it completely dying you know by 7 8 o'clock with heavy use I'm at usually about 45 50 percent the iPhone X uh, it's really it really varies it, it could be terrible but it could be really good the S9 on the other hand has thus far been just bad and again I don't know maybe I have a defective defective model because it's a 3000 milliamp battery you can see in a small device like that that is pretty impressive not quite as impressive as say the S8 Active which has a huge battery inside of its small frame, but still nonetheless impressive. Okay, let's go ahead and go through some of the software features here. Well, the first thing I'm gonna cover with software is security. So all three have face recognition. The iPhone has, of course, Face ID. The Samsungs have 
the IntelliScan, I believe it's called IntelliScan, as well as the uh, face and eye recognition. It's just the iris scanner, basically. So if I was to go to lock screen and security and screen lock type, okay, just go ahead and put my pattern. Yeah, intelligence scan, face scan, iris scan, fingerprint. So basically a mix of all different types of security features, security apparatus there. I've set it up with the S9, it's simple enough. It, you just basically lock the screen, put your face in front of it and unlocks it. So, and there's different variations of, of uh, security here with the S8 or the S9 and S9 Plus because you also have the fingerprint scanner on the back and you also have a pattern. So different variations, whereas with the iPhone, really all you have is the passcode and the face ID. You don't have a fingerprint scanner anymore. So some people may prefer having the fingerprint scanner, some people may prefer having nothing at all. However, I do want to mention that Samsung was first to make a phone with no physical button. So you could see you have the home, multitasking, and the back key. And on over here on the iPhone it's all gesture based. So you can see the gestures and how those work. Of course if I'm in an app I could just swipe up. Here I can simply open an app from multitasking. I can also minimize the app, which I'll show you right here. Okay, you can see that minimized. Simple enough. And I can do multiple tasks as I have it minimized. All right. Here with the multitasking, you could swipe as such. And then you can close out an app, swipe them up if you want to get rid of them. All right, multitasking here, you can do multi-window. See how multi-window works? Two things open at the same time. So, really good multitasking on all three devices. Samsung has more of like a... Samsung has more of like a Windows type multitasking where you could have an app open and do other things at the same time. So, all of them have the latest and greatest in terms of, in terms of hardware. I know I didn't get into that. I just wanted to really quickly mention that. And I do, I do have all that information uh, in the individual reviews if you guys do wanna go check that out. I just wanted to look at their respective software and how they compare to one another. So again, the multitasking, you guys saw how that looks. All right, going into their settings menus, you, they all have the ability to search settings, so you can do that if you'd like. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could turn up the brightness here. Okay, maybe turn up the brightness here too. Okay, you can see their settings menus. You still have that effect here, which you don't have with the Samsung. But um, I think Apple's settings menus is different in the sense that um, if you were to go through app settings, you would go through the system settings to reach them. Whereas with Android, the app settings are going to be in specific apps. Now, one thing I do mention as soon as you download an application, go to no notifications and turn off notifications. Same thing with iOS. Go to notifications, turn off notifications for any app games that you may not be using or that you just don't want notifications running in the background for. Do that immediately, okay? It's important. All right, swiping all those away. Um, in terms of their respective cameras, I'm not gonna get into the actual cameras here in this video because I did do that in the individual, individual reviews, but I will say that in terms of picture quality, I mean, all three of them are absolutely phenomenal. Um, here's a picture I took of my cat with the S9, with the S9 Plus of a goat, we went to a sanctuary. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and... All right, just looking at three pictures here I took with all three of these respective devices. Here's a picture of my cat with the S9, or with the iPhone X. Here's a picture of a goat from a farm sanctuary that we saw with the S9 and then there's a picture of my cat with the S9 Plus. All three are phenomenal quality um, and no doubt about that. So uh, if we're talking camera quality, you're gonna be hard pressed to really notice a difference. It, obviously the S9 Plus and the iPhone X have dual cameras so you're gonna get better wide shots. You're gonna get better shot, you're gonna get just better overall quality, period, point blank. But uh, the S9 is no slouch as you could see. The quality on the GOAT with the regular S9 is still really good. Okay, I'm just going into their cameras here, camera applications. Obviously, they're going to be the same here with the S9 and the S9 Plus. You can see their front-facing cameras. They all have filters, uh, different editing options that you can use. You could do wide, you know, full-screen mode here. 
Okay, again, you can go to the settings here through the application, whereas with iOS, I'd have to go through the actual system settings, change the video size, they all shoot in 4K. Okay, so right there, right off the bat, I just wanted to show you guys quickly, just show you guys the camera. You can check that out on an individual review um, if you want to check out in more in depth with the camera. All right, let's go through some real quick performance tests. So I'm going to see how I'm going to be able to do this here. Okay, well. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do. Well, let's just do them individually. Okay, so opening and closing out of applications here. Let's see how quickly that does that here on the iPhone. I can literally... And it never slows down. It doesn't lag. It's a little buggy, but it doesn't lag. Here with a regular S9. Okay. Still very fast. Maybe not as immediate but still super duper fast. 